Yeah, good afternoon, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Just thought I'd do a, um, a quick video, just a bit of a catch up on, on where I'm at as I wait for these AD 8307s to turn up. So, um, there's a couple of questions asked about the old SNA um, software. So, just been doing a bit of work on that over the last couple of days, and, and I've decided now just, I guess, to sort of train smash or to combine more the point. Uh, the antenna analyzer software and the SNA software into into one package It just means I get to share then or I don't have to duplicate more the point the screens and the Arduino the AD um, 9850 and the amplifier so that, that's all shared so at the moment this this board here Which is nice and robust which is good for me. Um, I, I don't tend to worry at this stage again with having this in a box But for me, this is just fine uh, dual purpose so the this is a um, an SNA slash antenna analyzer does two jobs in one. Um, with the switch on the left hand side, basically we're into our antenna analyzer mode. So the 9850 outputs our waveform. It's amplified up uh, to just over two volts peak to peak, uh, and then that gets fed through our bridge out the antenna, and uh, we read our uh, both our forward and our reflected power back. So if we were just to do now, say an HF um, scan. We'll do um, the lower HF band, for example, um, and we can see here that uh, we'll get an output there of uh, what this particular antenna is, and it's tuned there now and getting a nice null at 1.3 at uh, 3525 megahertz. So that's that's the, uh, the the this the antenna analyzer side of the house. That's all working fine. If you were now just to switch across to the um, the SNA side. Uh, we now have the ability through the uh, the SNA to um, do a, a user scan. So that will now scan between two set frequencies. Um, for example here, 8995 to 900200, uh, so just over 9 megs. And I'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, there's a calibrate, so that's just to, as per the original test software, it'll just measure um, the output of the... 9850 across the whole frequency range and then would then work out what the uh, the drop is on that output over that range create a correction factor that then is um, added to the actual measurement to offset that so if you go back to the previous video on uh, on that particular software that's described then so no no change to that at all uh, and thanks Dwayne um, he uh, suggested what he's done with his one is have a continuous scan mode so I've got that also now, so it just continuously scans across um, uh, across the uh, the actual filter itself. So if you were to do a um, a, a filter adjustment, you can see what's going on there. Um, and, but in this particular case, uh, what I do have over here is that little homebrew uh, crystal filter that uh, was made up, oh gosh, a couple of rigs back, um, just to play around with the, uh, the N6QW approach of just having... Um, set values of capacitor uh, from the junctions to ground and the input and the output just to see what that would look like uh, and that's that's certainly working fine and as we can see there the skirts aren't over well I haven't actually done too much work at all to to look to see how steep those skirts are um, by way of interest um, at the moment what I've what I decided to do within the software is the analog input here has uh, 1024 discrete levels that can be detected in the analog to digital converter um, and I've got set up inside the Arduino a, uh, an internal reference voltage of 2.56 as opposed to the default 5 volts uh, just to better align with um, what's coming out of the 80 so again the uh, 808307 and to get uh, a greater accuracy there so we know that the AD8307, which um, is still hiding in the old little um, Altoids uh, box there to get a bit of shielding, um, that has an output of 25 millivolts per dB. So if I was to divide 2.56 volts, which is my allowable um, analog voltage read input, by 25 millivolts per dB, it gives me an overall range of 102.4 dB. Um, which I think is probably uh, more than enough um, and in fact the noise floor with this whole arrangement here is around minus 80 dB so those tick marks on the left hand side are, are calibrated based on 
uh, that 25 millivolts per dV uh, and uh, like I say it's, it's divided up um, just toying with the idea of actually having those extending all the way across uh, at this stage of the game I haven't bothered or have frequency at the, at the um, through the bottom moving up so some kind of a grid arrangement um, I'll save that for winter when there's a bit of a cold day but at the moment that seems to be working quite fine I've gone away from having the the normalized approach so now it is actual so this is the actual uh, loss of the filter or the insertion loss of the filter and its passband um, so that's minus 20 dB there so up on the, the upper range here we're you know, I don't know minus I guess I'm just guessing here this may be why it's probably a good idea to have some lines coming across um, certainly well under 10 dB well under 10 dB of um, insertion loss there but anyway that's the um, that's the uh, the the SNA side of the house and like I say there's also a continuous mode that just keeps plotting across not so much for for this type of filter here but maybe for something like um, a filter like this, maybe not this example, but one which had um, fixed trim capacitors, it'd be a way of actually trimming those up uh, and then actually looking in real time uh, what the impact is or what the effect is more to the point um, on the, the pass band. So anyway, so it's just a, a quick update on, on that software. Um, like I say, might might look to do a little bit more in winter on the display within the SNA. But uh, at, this, at this stage of the game, I'm, I'm quite happy with how that's working out in terms of uh, the calibrate, the single scan, the continuous scan, uh, and the like. So that's so now sort of changes, or more the point, uh, makes me want to think about what I want to do now as I continue to wait for things to turn up. Um, and I've sort of been back over the list of ideas that have come in to date, um, as well as thinking about what I might want to do. Um, and having just sort of come off the back end of a, of a software uh, bit of a project here, I might do a little bit more hardware. Um, and I've been looking at um, some work online. It's certainly come up a few times uh, in the amateur radio circles here. And um, I was reading the blog from uh, Pete Giuliano, N6QW, and he certainly has been playing around with this FT8, which I have not played with around with before. And um, I sort of kind of like the idea of a little low-power rig just sort of just sitting there, uh, churning away, uh, making contacts. So I'm sort of half tempted to uh, make a 20 meter, so a 14 megahertz rig, um, which I haven't done for quite a while now, uh, and then have it, um, so be SSB, but then also make the interface for the FT8. So that, that FT8 inf interface has um, been suggested. You need uh, your, your audio, so your audio into the computer and the audio out of the computer plus a PTT line. But I think what would be quite nice is, um, you know, as we know, most modern computers don't have um, the old serial or a parallel port. Um, there is ways of, ways of means around that. For example, using, if I was to reach back here, um, say a little interface like this where we get the USB coming in uh, and then... Uh, the old serial on the output there, uh, including the um, request to send and the like, and the clear to send. So that is one approach to key the transmitter. But um, as was suggested a while back, um, what might be a nice idea, and, and I certainly agree, would it be to do a Vox. So uh, sense that audio coming out of the computer, um, amplify it, some kind of Schmidt trigger, I guess. Uh, and then have that key the transmitter to go into transmit mode. So that would be the idea of that FT8 would be a, would be a Vox for the transmit side. Uh, another option is to uh, rebuild the SDR rig from the ground up. I'll say from the ground up there, uh, and maybe add in amplitude modulation, which was a, another idea that came up a while back. Um, why? Because uh, as we've seen just just recently, uh, now getting the the uh, 98 so again the uh, SI 5351 to output the quadrature uh, clock signals down to 3.2 and I think even down to 3 megahertz uh, is certainly appealing and, and, and excellent and it would be nice to be able to rebuild that rig uh, get away with that quadrature clock generator and just use the SI 5351 directly into um, some kind of dual direct conversion receiver to then output that audio into the uh, the Teensy. Um, and like I say, potentially add um, some other modes to that. 
Um, and even maybe even, even look at, uh, now what's that screen, depending on the screen, um, some other display of some sort. But that's, that's certainly an option there which I would be quite keen to do. And the other option is maybe not straight away as, as a pan adapter. Um, had some parts turn up, so uh, we've got now the Tensi 3.5 um, with the associated um, audio board uh, for feeding in the audio, plus a uh, display there, so that could be an option down track is to marry those all up and then have a, a pan adapter clip-on, so to speak, for, for any rig. Um, and I think the approach there would be to uh, have the output of, say, the second IF amp before it goes into the, the uh, bandwidth determining uh, component there or the uh, the crystal filter um, to take a pick off there. So nice wide bandwidth and then have that going through some kind of uh, detector, bring it down to audio, uh, feed that into the Tensi and then have it displayed. Uh, the Tensi, if I recall, is a 44.1 kilohertz bandwidth uh, input on the audio, if I recall. I'd have to research that, so uh, we're probably talking about, if, you know, I'd have to double check it, but about 44 kilohertz bandwidth on that particular display. So it's 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 not a, uh, a high-end um, pan adapter, but you know, given the price and the cost, or the cost more the point, um, it's it's about right. So um, that would certainly be an, uh, an option there. So I think for now, moving forward and sort of getting the old soldering iron back up and running, it'd be nice to do probably that FT8 and 20 meters, uh, or rebuild the SDR rig. So um, I'm open to sort of uh, ideas on that one. The 20 meter rig might be quite nice. Uh, I can see that becoming eventually a portable rig. So um, I think it would be nice to do bilateral amplifiers for the, um, the IF stage. Um, and I'm sort of half tempted to, because I haven't done it for a while now, is to uh, dig out the old J310s, the JFETs, uh, and then and utilize those either in a, um, in a dual configuration as a, a dual gate MOSFET or, or otherwise. Um, but it might be quite nice to, to build a rig for that particular band. Um, get away from using the, the, the 3904s, which don't have terribly much gain up around there. Um, so yeah, the RF, the IF is a little bit different. Anyway, so that's just some ideas there which I wouldn't mind doing moving forward. Um, I'm conscious too that I've got a, um, a few business trips coming up over the next month or so, which is going to take um, a reasonable amount of my time away. So uh, I do want to make sure that uh, when I am back in the shack and I've got the soldering iron up and running and the calculator out, that I'm actually doing something which um, which would be enjoyable. Anyway, I will uh, say 73s there yet, uh, 73s I should say, um, and I'll probably look to put this, in fact I will put this code up on the blog um, under the SNA um, article more the point, and, and just acknowledging too that you know I'm not a software engineer by, um, by trade, um, so the software is a little bit uh, I could use the word janky, but you know, it's, it's certainly not polished, but it functions, it works. It's a bit like a state machine, it seems to work reasonably well. Um, so for a, uh, a ham shack such as mine, it's, it's more than suffice. So I'm more than happy to share that if it's of interest to people. So we'll put it up on the blog, like I say. Anyway, I'll say 73s, please, any comments uh, are more than welcome. And uh, I'll wish everybody a 73s, and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers all.